also works in a nutrition department in uh, the longevity clinic in um, Barcelona, Clinica Planas. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Anna, for your kind presentation, and thanks to the organization to invite me. I haven't got any conflict interest, okay? And uh, the topic of the lecture is clinical preconditioning for stem cells application. Don't worry if you don't do stem cells um, transplantation, because the same knowledge that I'm going to say to you, you can prescribe to your patients. It's easy, okay? So in summary, I'm going to talk about hormesis and three clinical preconditioning terms like hypoxia, like intermittent fasting, and the use of senolytics. Well, the, I think the, way, the best way in order to, to explain what is hormesis basically is whatever doesn't kill you, make you stronger, okay? And uh, there is uh, evidence that at low doses of substances considered toxic, like for example vaccines, can actually be beneficial rather than harmful. And there is a lot of types of hormetic agents in our life. We can have heat, heat exposure, cold exposure, some toxics, physical exercise is also a very good hormetic agent, intermittent fasting, hypoxia, and stress. Well, we, in the field of anti medicine, we should try to create an organisms that are resistant and tolerant, and a beneficial adaptation is hormesis with sublethal stressor preconditioning. So preconditioning is considered a new non-pharmacological therapeutic strategy for prevention and treatment of most current diseases. If you check in PubMed, if you put the word preconditioning, you can find more than 2,000 results, and if you put hypoxia preconditioning, you can see more than 2,000 results. Well, in terms of uh, stem cells, I don't know if you know, but uh, stem cells usually live in an um, in environment with poor oxygen, like bone marrow, or sometimes, uh, or mainly, sorry, in, inside of um, adipose tissue, subcutaneous adipose tissue, because too much oxygen increases uh, free radicals and, and oxidize them. So hypoxia preconditioning enhances bone marrow derived mesenchymal stem cell survival. Well, we have to remember that uh, oxygen saturation is usually in normal people should be between 95 to 100%. In the fetus, normal oxygen saturation usually is 65%. But while during birth, in the birth canal, the oxygen saturation usually is around 35%. The problem is that as we age during adulthood, resistance or, or tolerance to hypoxia is lost. And low oxygen concentration and nutrients can cause dead tissue and apoptosis of normal and healthy cells. The objective of hypoxia preconditioning is to create an organism uh, um, some resistant tissues in hypoxic situations. Well, as you can see here in this slide, low oxygen limited nutrition, like intermittent fasting or hypoxia, increase survival of stem cells. Now let's talk about a little bit of hypoxia. Well, as you know, when we climb a mountain, uh, in the top of the mountain, if we breathe there, our bloodstream, uh, we practically don't have oxygen, it's very low. If we compare with the oxygen at the sea level, and hypoxic preconditioning rejuvenates mesenchymal stem cells and enhances neuroprotective uh, following intracerebral hemorrhage. Here, this slide, you can see my father, 35 uh, years of hypoxia. And, uh, he did the first uh, experience in mountaineers in 1985. And then in decade of uh, 2000, he did the, the first hyperbaric chamber in Spain. And then we are using gas separation membrane in normal air to generate, to create a um, uh, low oxygen atmosphere through a mask, okay? 
so it's easier. You don't have to climb a mountain to, to improve your stem cells. Here you can see 1987 with a gas analyzer. My father was uh, taking um, lactate in a sportsman. And here you can see like um, artificial atmosphere with low oxygen concentration. After that, yeah, a bird. After that, <laughs> he did a hyperbaric chamber in 1995. And now in my medical center, we are using some devices to create uh, a poor oxygen concentrations through a mask. The patient basically, when he's, he's doing um, hypoxia therapy, the saturation, the blood, uh, the oxygen saturation should be between 75% to 85%. But I insist, it's physiological desaturation. It's not a disease, okay? It's quite different. It's a hermetic effect. When our body, when we don't have enough oxygen, our body release uh, HIF1 alpha, uh, intercivil hypoxic factor, in order to increase the levels of erythropoietin, vascular endothelial growth factor, angiogenesis, nitric oxide, glycolytic enzymes improve and improve metabolic, uh, anaerobic metabolism, increased resting energy expenditure too, and iron metabolism. So, hypoxic preconditioning maintain the regenerative potential of mesenchymal cells again. This is our protocol. The patient has to be from half an hour to one hour breathing uh, in hypoxia, three times or so maximum five times per week, three times, uh, three minutes or, or five minutes in hypoxia, and then one minute or two minutes with another mask with hyperoxia. And now here you can see all the benefits of hypoxia therapy, but uh, all, all of them in, in de decrease blood pressure, uh, increase the, the mitochondrial function and biogenesis, increase uh, capillarity density, endogenous antioxidant, decrease cholesterol levels, increase GLUT4, the transporter of uh, glucose, insulin sensitivity, and so on. Here you can see myself doing, let me show you, yeah, doing hypoxy therapy. You can see here at rest, I was 76% of oxygen saturation and more than 100 of heart rate. It's like doing physical exercise, but at rest. The same benefits. We can use hypoxia therapy also in a sports medicine to improve the VO2 max, injury, physical injuries, and cardiac and lung rehabilitations. This is the biography of the hypoxia. And now, what about intermittent fasting? As we age, you know stem cells are aging too, and they lose the, the, the functionality. But with caloric restriction and intermittent fasting, increase and improve uh, in at least one type of aged adult stem cells. So it's, a quite, it's quite good to prescribe physical exercise, intermittent fasting, and caloric restriction to our patients. And here again, caloric restriction, intermittent fasting, and ketogenic diet increase self-renewal of stem cells. In this case, again, fasting and refeeding regimes are powerful promoters of stem cell renewal because the activation of cell death and autophagy followed by the activation of stem cells or progenitor cells. Religious fasting, like nowadays in, uh, in Ramadan, for example, promotes a stem cell and endothelial progenitor cell function. Now it's easy to prescribe intermittent fasting. And how about senolytics? In my, from my point of view, in my practice, uh, in order to increase life expectancy and quality life, I try to do intermittent fasting. I prescribe good nutrition, also physical exercise, inhibit bad habits, neurobics, brain training, manage stress, genetics, predictive medicine, checkups, blood tests, as, as you know, and senomorphics, and also senolytics. This is, you can see the, the aging phase. You can take pictures if you want, don't worry. Yeah, why not? Again, if you want, <laughs> no worry. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, normal human cell cannot only replicate and, and divide. Uh, after 60 divisions, 
They are called senescent cells, okay? And these senescent cells secrete factors that consist constitute the senescent cells associated secretory phenotype and release um, um, inf uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines like TNF alpha or uh, interleucin uh, 6. And physical exercise is a very good option to treat it. As we age, the accumulation of stem, uh, stem cells, but basically senescent cells, is, is tremendous. And we can use xenomorphics and xenolytics to, to treat it. But what is xenomorphic? Xenomorphics are agents that modulate the secretory phenotype by preventing senescent cells from releasing inflammatory substances without causing apoptosis. But xenolytics are substances or agents that eliminate senescent cells. We can combine both. Physical exercise, again, is a very good uh, prescription, very good option to senescent cells clearance and senescent cells um, el elimination. But remember other types of xenotherapeutics like, like metformin, very nice drug. Metformin is xenomorphic. Rapamycin is xenolytic. Fisetin, I love fisetin, is xenolytic and in vivo and in vitro, even in humans, okay? Quercetin, xenomorphic, resveratrol, also xenomorphic. Here you can, you can see in this slide how caloric restriction, fasting, curcumin, rapamycin, resveratrol, NAID+, plus, how they can contribute to increase the, the healthy of stem cells. Well, also the senolytics preserve and rejuvenate old organs from transplantation. Here you can see, this is very, very interesting uh, paper, that the doctors get the, the organ and then put the organ isolate and put senolytics inside, rejuvenate the senescent cells and these uh, stem cells and then put again into the, to the recipient. So new experimental show that the depletion of senescent cells that accumulates in old organs improve organ quality and transplant outcomes. Here you can see our protocol when we try to do stem, stem cell transplantation. One month ago, we prescribed senolytic complex and intermittent fasting, 10 days before hypoxia treatment, then we do stem cells. Okay, here you can see our surgery room, and thank you very much for all. Thank you very much, Ivan, for Thanks. explaining your clinical practice.